got word today that five New Jersey organizations will get $2 million from the federal government to help people enroll in the new health insurance exchanges. And joining us now is the regional director of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Dr. Jaime Torres. Doctor, welcome back to the program. Thank we you, Mike. We appreciate that. This, now, this is not the first go-around for the so-called... Uh, I guess, well, navigators is what we're calling them right now, but this is, uh, you've got a, a geographic representation of people who are supposed to do what precisely? Well, these are navigator programs for the what is called the Federal Facilitated Exchanges, which mm -hmm. New Jersey is one of them, right. and it was announced just an hour ago, and we have five groups here in New Jersey, and this will be in addition to the federally qualified health clinics. Mm -hmm. We have 20 in New Jersey who, who mm -hmm. receive $3.6 million. They have 125 sites. So these are two groups that are funded by the federal government to enroll during open enrollment. Do they go out looking for people? Do they put up signs? Do they go on the internet? How are they supposed to find these people? So they will have a different plan, but they will be overly covering the 21 counties of the Garden State. And they will have a plan that they submitted for, for this grant application. But they will be on the ground. They will be in the communities. They will be also talking people with different languages, to make sure that we can reach all the 900,000 people who are uninsured in New Jersey. There have been some national surveys out that show a, a lot of people are still not aware of what's to come starting well, October 1st. October 1st. Yeah. Open enrollment begins October 1st nationally, and it will last until March 31st. Look, this is a hugely new program. It happened with the Medicare Part D. It happened with Medicare in 1965. Mm -hmm. So we know there's a lot of lack of information and misinformation, and we're on the ground, our department, and many, many partners in, in the Garden State to make sure we get the word out. For people who would like to participate in these health insurance exchanges, to, to buy health insurance through them, and I believe there were, what, there were four companies in New Jersey that have applied to, to sell insurance, right? Yes, and they haven't been announced yet. They will be announced soon. So they are, they are, we're, we haven't made that official, but we will make well, that I'll, announcement well, soon. Well, I'll tell you, uh, we hear that it's Aetna, Health, Horizon, and something called Health uh, Republic Insurance of New They're Jersey the as well. Yes. What, uh, I guess my question is, is why did they, I, I don't see Cigna, I don't see United, I don't see some, some of the biggest health insurers in this country here. Well, this has not been announced, so I can really not comment on that, but all those uh, applications have been vetted. They have to make sure they follow the uh, regulations that are set forth by the federal government. So when, when they're announced, I'll come back to tell you and probably give you that answer. I appreciate that. For people who do apply, ultimately, for health insurance through the exchanges, what, what's the cost factor going to be? Compared to others outside. Well, one of, this is one of the things. We want insurance that will follow the rules and obviously that will offer affordable coverage to every person applying to the marketplace. So we're talking about affordable coverage that will have 10 essential benefits. Mm -hmm. They can offer more. Mm -hmm. And that has to be affordable. But also importantly, we're going to offer tax breaks, tax subsidies mm -hmm. to pay for the health coverage. Uh, for the people who apply and also small businesses. We, well, so we that's had, an important part that we need to make sure that people know about. We had heard and we continue to hear that some businesses are saying, you know what, it's just not worth my while. I may have to lay off people instead of do this. I'll take the penalty that will go with this. Uh, they could pay a penalty sure. instead of insuring. How, is, that, is that problem a persistent problem? Is that problem a problem that, that you think you can deal with or make go away for that sure. matter? Two things. So the majority of small businesses in the United States are 50 employees or less, and they are not required to offer health coverage. And the majority of those with 50 and over already offer health coverage. So number one. Number two, that was the same story when we heard in Massachusetts, that this will happen in Massachusetts. It never happened. So that's, that's a great litmus test to see what would happen nationally. So we are continue to offer assistance background information to make sure that no business will drop employees. It, it's not good business either. How many people are eligible in this state? N over, a little bit over 900,000 people who are uninsured are eligible to get insurance October 1st, and over 700,000 of them will be able to get either Medicaid or tax credits to pay for that. Do you have any sort of internal guesstimations as to what percentage is likely to take advantage of these opportunities? We don't know yet, but our goal, my goal, the goal of our department is to get 100% of those 900,000. We're going to be working day in and day out until October 31st. One quick question. 
if 100% show up and say we want it, is the system big enough, strong enough, and capable enough to handle them all? We are open, we'll be open October 1st, and again, we're gonna, they're gonna bring you some bugs, we know that. But remember, this is gonna last until March 31st. We have a lot of time to get to, to those New Jerseyans who are been waiting for this moment. Dr. Torres, always a pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you for so coming much. in, sir. Thank you.